data frames, summarizations, visualizations. So that's what we're going to discuss. And so in order for us to really get this going, let's go ahead and review to create a new window. We're going to do command shift N or create a new file command or control shift N. Oh, I'm not clicking the screen, sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in a tad bit. And I'm gonna note that anytime I'm doing R, I'm going to load in my packages. I'm gonna load in my libraries. And so if I wanna load in my library, especially for this class, it's gonna be stack cow poly package, and I'm good to go. So the first thing, and then that's really important, every single time that you run this, you had to run that, that line. Um, so when it comes to data frames, data frames is a way for us to organize our data in rows and columns. So when I say rows, I'm more so specifying my observations. And when I say columns, I'm specifying my variables. So one of my favorite data sets is the King County data set, okay? And so what I mean by rows and columns, let's go ahead and visualize. Let's actually view this data. So if you use view, okay, view, the view function, it's gonna create like an Excel sheet type of window. So here is a data frame. It consists of the data that I collected, or I didn't collect this data, but data collected where my columns, ID, BWT's birth weight, low as if they had a low birth weight or, or high, not a low birth, birth weight. Um, first step is if, if they're in program or not, a first step program and so on and so forth. Those are my variables across here. And then my rows are my observations. So King, this King County data, so let me give you some background information. This is about pregnant women in King County, Washington during the late 1980s. And it records the race of the mother, the age of the mother, and things of that matter to see if, actually, if these variables have an impact on the baby's birth weight. Okay, so this is one of the ways for us to visualize this data. At least view this data, the data frame. And so, the reason why this is nice to do is sometimes for you to like see any abnormalities and things that may deviate from what you expect. Another thing that you can do is press string, SR, STR, not string, which is really structure, King County. And when you do this within your console, you start to see the type of variables that, that are in your data frame, okay? What's nice here is that some of these these um classifications kind of give you a hint on what kind of variable that you're dealing with. This is ID. Really, ID is neither a quantitative or a categorical. Um, one can argue that it's a categorical variable, but that's nearly not the point here. But if you look at BWT, birth weight, that's going to be integer. That's a quantitative variable. You're measuring weight. Low first tape gender, all, they all say factors. Another way of factors in R that's just a categorical variable. And since they have two levels, they're categorical binary. Race is categorical as specified before. It's categorical, just regular, because it's not two levels. Age is going to be quantitative. Parities, if they have a child, how many children they have had in the past. Smokers has two levels, categorical binary, and so on. So you all get the gist from there. So one of the things that we can then do is to summarize our data. Okay, let's summarize our data. So if I wanted to summarize our data, there's this function called summarize um, two quant variables, okay? And as you can see, this little thing pops up here. And what this gives you is a hint on what's important to run this function. So here, df is gonna be equal to the actual data frame, king county data, comma. It says, I'm gonna then input x variable. We wanna talk about explanatory variables and response variables this week. And so my x variable is always going to be my explanatory variable in this situation. So my x variable here, let's say I want to see if, um, let's see, what does the example say? Gender, if gender has an impact on gain weight. So gain 
weight. Okay, that's good. And then last but not least, I need to just say pair is equal to false. Okay, so then when I do that, when I run that, okay, I get a summarization. I get my sample size for both groups. That's my N. It gives me my mean for both groups, my mu one and mu two are mu f and mu m and it gives my standard deviation for both groups that's great and fantastic okay so what i can also do so what i can also do is go down a little bit and see uh create a, a box plot for this data so again i'm using box plot this is my data frame king county data my x variable is gender my y variable is gain weight the name of my title i can name it whatever i want to remember i got a classify it based on the true variable names so when i run this i actually can now see my box plot so my x-axis is my explanatory variable and my y-axis is my response variable and you can see um your box plots as such look at this outlier this is strange so it's someone gaining 150 pounds i mean that is possible but that's that should cause you to think about the data a little bit more which is nice um so yeah i mean this is how you would analyze or visualize um two independent sample means so when it comes to pair data it kind of works very similarly in terms of functionality but we're going to visualize it differently in this class and we're actually going to summarize it in a very similar fashion but utilize the function a little differently so summarizing it we use a Let's say that we're looking at GPA data, okay? So if I were to do STR of GPA data, okay, let me make this bigger so you can see. Okay, this is telling me that I'm looking at 120 observations, GPA. So each person's being measured twice in the spring quarter as well as the winter quarter, okay? And so in this situation, what you would then do to summarize it is just run this, run this. And here you get, you're getting you're get, you're given sorry sample size the mean of the differences the standard deviation of the differences between spring and winter and the max and the min between of the difference between spring and winter and this is telling you how the difference was calculated it was calculated winter minus spring okay and so that's nice to see and then in terms of visualizing the differences since it's just one sample and when it comes to pair data. Let's go ahead and just use a histogram. Okay, you can change the color and so forth. You can see where I put my explanatory variable and my response variable. And this is the mean, oh, this is the, it's the distribution of the differences. You have some outliers here. You have some outliers here. Or at least one outlier, a couple outliers here. And this is the general distribution shape, okay? So that's how you run the functions within R to actually visualize two independent sample means as well as uh, pair data when it comes to the data frame summarizations and visualizations.